So in this example, Alaska and Arizona cannot discover each other through inverse ARP. Um, so we will statically map all DELCs to the IPs. Um, so from Alabama, config T, interface serial 00, frame dash relay map, uh, IP, put in the IP of the remote side, and then your, your DELC number. So frame relay map IP 192.168.5.2 space 503 space, and uh, you're going to want to set it up as broadcast. And then you're going to have to do the same thing with the, uh, the DELC to the other router. So it'd be frame dash relay map IP 192.168.5.3504 broadcast. So going back to the map, so you can see why that's, that's doing that. So you got the dot two here, the dot three here. Dot two matches up with 503. Dot three matches up with uh, Delsi 504, and if you go back to our configuration, that's exactly how this is set up. Dot two goes to 503. Dot three goes to uh, Delsi 504. So uh, we'll also need to add the static Delsi maps on the other two routers. Um, so <coughs> these ones are a little bit different because you're going to use the since they only have one connection, one one PVC. But they've got two uh, two other routers on the network that they can potentially access. You need to map both of those routers to that that one Delsi that they have available. So for Alaska, interface serial zero, frame map IP 192.168.5.1305 broadcast, and the same thing, but dot three three oh five broadcast, and the same thing on Arizona, frame map IP 192.168.5.1405 broadcast frame map IP 192.168.5.2405 broadcast. So if we go back to the original network design, you know, for Alaska, it's got this IP here and this IP here. It needs a Delsi for, it's, it needs a, a, a mapped Delsi for each of those, but they're both gonna use that same 305 Delsi number because that's the only um, option that it has. And same thing for Arizona. It's got this IP and this IP that it can potentially reach on the network but both of those are going to map to the same DELC 405, but you still need a, a static mapping for each of those individual IPs. Um, now we verify the LMI maps and PVCs. Um, show frame-relay LMI. And so we're looking at these two numbers here and comparing them to these two numbers over here. Looks like those are pretty close. You're off very slightly, but nothing to, uh, to really be worried about. If you do a show frame dash relay map, you can see the, the IPs mapped to each Delsi. So on Arizona, you got dot one mapped to 405 and dot two also mapped to 405. Both of those are active. Show frame relay uh, PVC. On Arizona, you've only got the one, but you can see that it's local and it's active. Delsi number 405, and again, still listed as active. Uh, verification of layer 3 to the WANs of the other two routers shows they are working and also reveals the additional delay caused by the hub and spoke design. So from Arizona, if you try to ping both the, the really far remote router as well as the hub router, starting off with the hub router, you'll see that the, the response times are you know 58 milliseconds approximately. But if you try to get to the other router uh, that's, that's connected through that same PVC, you see that it doubles, effectively doubles the uh, the amount of time that it takes to traverse that. So that that kind of further further illustrates the problems you can have if you're trying to run VoIP or something. If you have a uh, frame relay design like this, um, since it's going to have to traverse through that hub, you're going to add that extra network delay. Um, Although everything looks good on the WANs, um, checking the routing tables on these shows that the LAN route advertisements are still being hindered by the split horizon rule. The hub will see all route advertisements, but the spokes aren't going to. So the, again, we, we already kind of went over like why it's not able to advertise uh, out those. In, in, this, in this configuration, we're not setting the, um, the interfaces on the hub router as sub-interfaces, so it still looks at that as one you know single interface, so it's not going to resend the the uh, advertisements for uh, the land the land blocks. Uh, the split horizon problem can be eliminated using a point-to-point -point configuration as we're going to see in the next example or in this case we can disable split horizon. Um, make sure you only do it on the hub router only. So before we even do this, so we're only, we're only uh, disabling split horizon on the hub router because that's the only point like it's really going to matter. You got to keep in mind that like these these network tools are there for a reason. Split Horizon is serving a very uh, very 
purposeful function. So you really need to make sure you know what you're doing if you're if you're going to go ahead and remove um, a functionality like Split Horizon. You're really not going to have to worry about this all, at all if you use the, the preferred configuration option we're going to get into in the next example. But in the event that you do need to disable this, um, it's done on an interface by interface basis. So config t interface serial 00, no IP split dash horizon EIGRP 100. This is, um, I guess they're using EIGRP for the routing protocol. That's the instance. Um, and then you'll see, you know, the split horizon changed, etc., etc. And then after that, you'll be able to see that on the, uh, the individual spoke routers, okay, look there, you can finally see the, um, the LAN blocks that were remote that you wouldn't have been able to see prior to that. So the last, I guess, step to try um, that I guess isn't fully illustrated here would be make sure you can ping those LAN blocks from each of the spoke routers to, to guarantee full functionality. So now we move on to the, the best and preferred uh, frame relay configuration, which is point-to-point -point interface configuration with sub-interfaces. Um, let's see, it avoids the split horizon problem by using logical sub-interfaces on a single physical interface. Said that over and over, but saying it again. So here's our network design, very similar to the last one. We've got a, a hub right here. We've got two spokes right here. And you can see on the hub, it's got one serial zero um, connection here, but it's got two sub-interfaces configured on that. So serial 00 0.503 goes to you know 10.5.5.1, or excuse me, it goes to this guy over here. It's got that same IP. Um, and then uh, sub-interface serial 0 slash 0 0.504 corresponds to this side of the network. So starting with the hub router, familiarize yourself with the interfaces and configure the physical WAN interface for encapsulation frame relay. Show IP in brief, we're able to look at our interfaces, determine which one's the WAN and the LAN. Serial zero is our WAN. Config T, interface serial zero zero. Encapsulation frame dash relay, exit. We're just using uh, Cisco equipment, so you don't need to worry about putting the IETF option here. And you see the line protocol go, uh, go up after that. Next, configure the first logical interface. So, uh, config from global configuration mode, interface serial zero slash zero dot, and then whatever you want your uh, your sub interface to be. In this case, they're they're doing the uh, the recommended option of making it match the Delsey number just for uh, clarity's sake. So, interface serial zero slash zero dot five oh three, and then it's going to have the point to point option following. Go ahead and add an IP address on there. Uh, set the Delsey. So IP address 10.5.5.1.255.255.255.0. Frame dash relay interface dash Delsey 503. Exit exit gets you back to global configuration mode. And then you're going to need to set up the second logical interface. So interface serial 0 slash 0 0.504 to match uh, Delsey 504. Point to point. IP address 10.6.6.1.255.255.255.0. Frame dash relay interface dash Delsey 504 and end. So once you're done with that, verify the interfaces again. Show IP in brief. You can see you got your physical interface here. It's up up. You've also got your two logical sub interfaces, uh, .503 and .504, with the IP addresses, and they are also up. Now bring up the other two routers. So jumping on to Bluegill, uh, show IP in brief. Familiar familiarize yourself with the interfaces. Looks like we need to make some changes to serial zero. Config T, interface serial zero, encapsulation frame dash relay. Uh, you see the the interface go up. Exit, <coughs> interface serial 0 0.305, point to point. So you, even though you've only got one interface here, you're still setting a logical sub interface um, corresponding to the Delsey. Just a good idea. Um, IP address 10.5.5.2, 255.255.255.0, uh, and then frame dash relay interface dash Delsey 305. So that, that all matches up. You see everything come up on that side as well. Change state to active on the Delsey.